Is it not clear? And so our function now is to learn how to be the Son of God. Because in doing this, we defeat the limitations imposed upon the natural man. And we enter paradise. Adam was banished by world thought. We re-enter by dissolving world thought, seeing through it, understanding the nature of it. Honor the sun. Be the sun. And open your heart to the great mysteries of the Bible which teach us how to be the Son of God. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father that sent him. This should be read as follows. He that is not the Son honoreth not the Father that sent him. In the Moffat Bible, we find an important idea in the verses just preceding the King James Version. Moffat says that God has committed all judgment to the Son, but Moffat also adds the Father has committed the judgment which determines life or death entirely to the Son. You won't find that in the King James. But Moffat felt that this was important for a reason. And he's correct because this is also clarified later by the sentence in verse 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. You see, the natural man does not receive the life of God. That life is eternal. And so the human race struggles through a temporary human existence, acts like a mortal being, thinks like a mortal being, and even boasts that it is mortal. You know what Shakespeare said about that. What fools these mortals be because they live in a transient, imperfect human life. While the perfect divine life is right there for the taking. To be the Son of God is your purpose on earth. For this alone honors the Father. And the entire testament of Jesus Christ has only one purpose, and that is to teach you how to be the Son of God instead of the natural man who wallows in world thought until he dies.
This truth was not available for man for some 14 centuries after the teaching of Jesus Christ on this earth. It sounds unbelievable. But for 14 centuries after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this truth was not on this earth for mankind in general. You see, there were no Bibles. Just a few hand-printed copies scribbled out on parchment very laboriously and owned by a few men of means. To some of them, it was nothing more than a status symbol. And to others, it was a means of enforcing Mosaic law. By the time printing came around in the 15th century, the truth was hidden behind centuries of darkness. All the bloodshed, cruelty, the suffering of the past 20 centuries is a direct result of man's unawareness that he is the Son of God. And by not being that Son, he is dishonoring God. We've had 20 centuries of the natural man living at the mercy of material law. And that's why we've seen the horrors, the tragedies, poverty, starvation, despair, corruption, a vast debasement of the spirit of man, complete and entire civilizations enslaved by the greatest tyrant of all time, the world mind. But this year, I don't mean next year, this year, we shall walk this earth as a son of God. We shall return to the Father's house. We shall know God aright. I'd like you to look at the healings of Jesus Christ for a moment. Just run through some of those in your mind's eye. The persons he healed, the things he healed them of. And you will find one incredible truth present in every one of those healings. Without that truth, not one of the healings would have been possible. And when that truth that I am speaking of is active in your consciousness, you no longer are the natural man. When that truth is active in your consciousness, you are the Son of God who receives the things of God. And I want you to know that truth. Jesus Christ upheld that truth while walking this earth. It is the truth that the world has missed. It is a shattering, almost shuddering truth. Because it collapses everything else you may have ever thought. But it is truth. And that truth is this. There is only one being. Only one being. And do you know who can uphold that truth? No one but the Son of God. 
the natural man always must violate that truth. And so, unless you are willing to be the Son of God, you cannot obey the truth that there is only one being. But on the other hand, your capacity to obey that truth, to trust that truth, will release you into the unconditional universe. And that is why I say this truth, one being, only one, is the foundation of your transformation. Not the natural man, but the Son of God. And as you practice being the Son of God, you will find yourself practicing that there is only one being. And you will find you have the key to the kingdom of God. Now, today you may appear to be a businessman, or maybe a career woman, or maybe a housewife. But that's only how you appear to the natural mind, the hypnotized mind. But you are not a businessman. You are not a career woman or a housewife. And the one who has to know that is you. There is only one being. Ah. Right there. The one being is not a businessman. The one being isn't a career woman or a housewife. And there is no other being than the one. Therefore, if you think you are another being than the one, you are rejecting the principle of one being. And when you reject the principle of one being, you are not honoring the Father. And why? You're not honoring the Son. You see, there's some work for you to do. You have only one identity, Son of God. You can't be the Son of God and also a businessman. You can't be Son of God and a housewife, Son of God and a career woman. And now let's go further. You are not a white businessman or a black businessman. You're not a Christian businessman or a Muslim businessman. You're not a successful career woman or an unsuccessful one. You're not even a married housewife or a widowed housewife or a single woman. These things are separate divided. They exist only in the natural mind. And that separates us from God. Every housewife is separated from God. Every businessman, every career woman is separated from God. But above mind, in consciousness, above the separated images called people, above the false divisions of the senses, above the limitations and the contradictions that separate the human race from reality, beyond the logic 
beyond the approval of the human mind, beyond and above and within the entire human, animal, vegetable and mineral kingdoms, you must accept the words of God. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. You accept one being where the natural mind of the world sees multiple beings. You know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. All divisions are swept away. Your temple must be cleansed of division until you stand face to face with the great vision of Paul, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And then your soul is saying there is one being which is the only being. And this is my being. You are the new Lazarus. The old Lazarus has been buried. Which life do you intend to live? The one buried in the tomb of flesh? Or the eternal life, which is never confined to the limitations of the natural mind? I tell you today, the principle of one being makes the difference. When the woman with an issue of blood touches the hem of Christ's robe, she is touching the consciousness of one being. And that consciousness heals automatically, instantaneously, without taking thought. That's the consciousness that healed the paralytic and the withered hand. As you learn to think, to live, to act, from the standpoint of one being, you are the living son of the living God. And the glory of the Father flows through you because... Son, all that I have is thine. It is the supreme wisdom of infinite intelligence that no one can live in heaven except the Son of God. For it is only the Son of God who acknowledges one being without opposite. I think perhaps we can all see clearly now what Christ Jesus was really teaching He wasn't healing a paralytic. He wasn't healing a blind man or a woman with an issue of blood. He wasn't healing anyone. He was revealing that there is only one being who is perfect, not paralyzed. 
not blind, not with an issue of blood. And if you can see that, you can make an even bigger leap. For the Son of God, there can never be a healer and a victim. That would be two. Christ did not heal thousands. He demonstrated that there is only one, and that one is perfect. Everywhere the Christ walks, the Christ sees one being. The Christ is the Son of God. Everywhere you walk, Unless you see one being, you are proclaiming yourself not to be the Son of God. The world sees many images. The Son of God sees the one invisible self. The name of the one being is I. The name of the Son of God, therefore, is I. Because I go to the Father. And I, God the Son, am the same identity as I, God the Father. One being. And that is why Christ says, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Only the Son of God goes to the Father. Who are you? Our starting point for progression into the higher realms of consciousness is the continuous awareness, the continuous practice, the continuous fidelity to the beautiful, glorious truth that you are the Son of God, and God is the only being. If you are striving to be true to the only being, you will learn how to be the Son. And if you strive to live as the Son, you will learn how to honor the only being. They work like a tandem. One supports the other. And on these two truths, you will walk into the Promised Land. This is our path. With this method we will fulfill the scripture which says, To fulfill the works of God, believe on him whom God hath sent. Because the him whom God hath sent is you, the Son of God. Believe that you are the Son of God, for only your true identity can transcend the human mind shatter the dream, and express divine works. Think back a moment. Do you remember what Christ said when he received word that Lazarus was sick? He said to his disciples, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, which Son of God was he talking about? Was he talking about himself? 
about Lazarus? Are there two sons of God when there is only one being? Christ Jesus was the Son of God. That we know. But here, with this statement, he was showing us that Lazarus too was the Son of God, the life of God, and therefore could not be dead. By revealing that the living Son of God was the true identity of the dead Lazarus, Christ was revealing that the living Son of God is the identity of everyone who walks this earth and of everyone who has walked this earth and of everyone who will walk this earth. Lazarus was alive before Christ approached the tomb and commanded Lazarus come forth. The Son of God could never die. All that had died was an illusion in the mind of the natural man. That's all that death ever can be. And so now you and I are called upon to duplicate the demonstration of Jesus Christ. Yes. With one difference. Demonstrate that you are the living Son of God, not a dying mortal. Just as Christ demonstrated that Lazarus was the living Son of God, although to the human mind Lazarus was a dead mortal, for the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater wonders than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Lazarus, come forth. Glorify the Son, and the world will know that every man, woman, and child on earth is the eternal Son of God, the very self of God, the one being who never dies. There is an interesting experience that comes to you along this particular practice of one meaning. It kind of makes you speechless with an inner joy, and I cannot describe it. But I must try, because
It explains things that the natural mind does not and cannot understand. You are in a state of meditation, and you have, to some degree, reached the point where the world is to you nothing but world thought, you have somehow been lifted to the point where your own mind is no longer a factor to confine you. You're up into a different kind of stratosphere. And out of nowhere, something enters your being. It seems to go right through instantly to a place inside you where your body just drops away. And when it lays hold of you in its own way, it's such a shock, such a, an unexpected surprise that you almost gasp with a, a peculiar kind of joy. And something in you says, is this what it is? Yes, this must be what it is because everything feels different. Where did the world go? Where did I go? I feel like something different than I was. I feel somewhat universal. Like I am everything. All at once, everything. And at that moment you realize that a new faculty is being developed. A new faculty, a new sensitivity. Something which in an instant knows everything you have been trying to find out about in all of your living adult years. And then you remember why Joel kept saying, you cannot see spiritual truth, you must discern it. This new faculty discerns. It is a discerning faculty. And it only enters your consciousness when you have been practicing that there is one being and when it happens and the first shock is over you will know that this new faculty is going to be your teacher The comforter has touched you because you have put away the flesh. Because you have put away the natural man. If you put away the natural man, the comforter can come unto you. But if the natural man goeth not away, the comforter cannot come unto you. So Jesus left his disciples. And so they received the comfort. It won't help to wait for it expectantly because it doesn't come that way in a moment when you know not. The bridegroom marries you and you are married to the infant. It happens.
It will happen to you. And in my heart of hearts, I'm hoping that some of you are saying, it already has happened to me. Because I know it has. But the point of it is that when all hope for attaining this ultimate truth within is gone, when you feel abandoned and alone, it is only because the vestiges of the natural mind still hold you in bondage. And things you cannot understand with the natural mind are suddenly dissolved when through fidelity to one being, the comforter touches your consciousness. At the very moment when Christ stood before the tomb of Lazarus, he was practicing I am the only being, the Son of God. But he had attained that level of awareness in which this was no longer a thing he had to remind himself of. He was it, and it had to manifest as the living Lazarus. But he was also practicing many other vital principles. And I believe the world has overlooked many or most of them. So we're going to look at some of those principles too right now, at least the major ones. Because Christ Jesus, the Son of God, is there revealing what everyone who has made the commitment to live as the Son should practice until the Comforter arrives and we are fully reborn of the truth and the Spirit. Christ, standing before the tomb of Lazarus, is you, the Son of God. Son of God standing before the tomb of Lazarus now knows God is the only being and God is alive. There is only the life of the one and only being. There is no other life. It is always living. That is the knowledge you bring into your daily work wherever you go. Everywhere you see the images of the natural mind, when you do not know the one life alone is present, you are saying that you are not the Son of God because the Son of God always knows this. Ah, again. When you turn away from the knowledge of the one life, you turn away from your own being. When you see an alcoholic, you have just decided that you are not the Son of God. When you see an adulteress, you are saying you are not the Son of God. The Son of God recognizes the one life of the one being, not the alcoholic, not the adulteress, not the thief on the cross. When you see disease, disaster, discord, who is seeing it? Only the natural man. 
the Son of God sees none of these things, who convinceth me of sin? The Son of God looks at the spiritual universe. Even while the eyes of the natural man see the material universe, the Son of God looks at a tomb where a dead man seems to be and knows there is no one there. The life of God is the only life. Every form that has walked this earth is that life. And that life is present. And the forms that have gone into the tomb are not there. The life of God is walking this earth. They are living souls everywhere present. And those who walk the earth today in form are the invisible life of God, the invisible Son of God. If you deny their identity as the Son of God, you have denied your own identity. The Son of God does not see a dead Lazarus or a diseased Lazarus, but sees the living life of God, the Son of God. Christ Jesus standing before the tomb of Lazarus is saying, there are not two Lazarus down here, down there, and I, Jesus Christ up here. There is one Son of God. Lazarus is that Son of God. I am that Son of God. Invisibly, we are the one Son of God. Lazarus, come forth is the statement that Lazarus and Jesus Christ are the one Son of God, the living life of God. That you and Jesus Christ are the one Son of God, the living life of God. You are the new Lazarus. Standing before the tomb, which is the human race. That's where the human race is, in the tomb of Lazarus. The Son of God stands there, but he knows that there is one perfect being forever. No other being. And that is the meaning of omnipresence, right? There's one perfect power. No other power. Now, everywhere. And that is the meaning of omnipotence. One perfect consciousness. No other consciousness. Now, maintaining the purity of its perfect universe. And that is omniscience. And these are the living consciousness of the Son of God, which we, as we grow up to learn our identity, must practice in order to attain the maturity of our identity. Everyone is the Son of God and has all that the Father hath though he may appear to be an addict to drugs or alcohol or lust or greed or whatever. The appearance does not change the invisible Son of God who stands there. Always the golden self is present where the image of the natural mind seems to be. The Son of God recognizes no separate beings, no separate forms, no separate persons, no separate humans, no separate mortals. There is only 
1b. The Son of God recognizes no bad conditions, no imperfections, because the life of the one being is unconditioned, perfect forever. The Son of God walks in a perfect universe governed by perfect spiritual law, looking through the appearances of the natural mind. The Son of God is well aware that the senses of man lie. The senses are fooled by atoms. The senses are fooled by world thought. The Son of Man knows that there is no world thought, and therefore he takes no world thought. The Son of God sees the Son of God everywhere, because there is only one being. And therefore the Son of God does not accept sickness, because the Son of God is all that is present, and the Son of God is never sick, never suffering, never diseased, never starving, never dying, and never dead. To the Son of God, life is not in a tomb, it is never imprisoned, it is always free. The Son of God is eternal, because the Son of God is inseparable from God. And therefore, the Son of God is inseparable from God's perfect power, God's perfect peace, God's perfect consciousness. The Son of God has no age no lifespan. The Son of God is always alive, just like the Father. Remember then, the real identity of every victim is always the Son of God. That's the identity of enemy, neighbor, bill collector, old man, newborn infant, every creed, every color, every race is the invisible Son of God. Only the Son of God upheld is the obedience to all the Ten Commandments. You, as the Son of God, living in the knowledge of one being, automatically are fulfilling the Ten Commandments. The Son of God lives outside the world mind, outside the material dream, acknowledging one unconditioned presence. The Son of Man judges no matter, accepts no matter, accepts no material condition. The Son of Man accepts no external being, but only acknowledges the glorified God-Self everywhere, the never-born one life. I don't know if we should go further in this direction at the moment or not. There is so much to do here for you in the next two months.
But it should be clear that your path to the ocean of spirit depends on these simple truths. You are the Son of God and there is only one being. And then as you follow the master who walked through the natural mind, dissolving its false concepts, you can see that you have a way shower who teaches you how to be the living son of God that you are. And with this method of following the way shower's method, you transcend the mind. You transcend human thought. You go beyond thought. And soon, the thought that you have is the thought that flows from God. And this is the Christ mind, for this is the thought of the Father flowing through the Christ mind of the one who knows himself to be the Son of God. What are you doing at this point? You are crucifying world thought. Oh, yes. Isn't that what Jesus was doing? Crucifying world thought. That's what the Son does. The Son crucifies the world thought that denies the existence of the Father. You unsee the false creatures of world thought. You rise above what God the Father did not create. You rise above all that is not God's will. And in a flash of divine insight, you realize that a great power has shattered the hypnosis. God's perfect will is revealed to you, functioning on earth. The unseen universe that was invisible to your sense mind is now revealed to your newborn consciousness. Cause and effect are brought into simultaneity. All mental forms drop away. All involuntary world thought loses its power to confine you, to deceive you, to betray you, to hypnotize you. This is the accelerated consciousness of the Son of God, the quickened consciousness. And it awaits you now as you walk forth inwardly proclaiming, I am the Son of God. And wherever I walk, only 
the Son of God is. The 23rd Psalm becomes an experience. Not a few lines in a book. You experience yourself as the omnipresent spirit. For you have no neighbor except yourself. Do you recall how Joel frequently talked about the tree, the seed, the root, and pointed out that the life of the tree was also the life of the seed on the tree? And the life of the tree, which was the life of the seed, then became the life of the root that formed after the seed fell into the ground. It was always one life, whether it was tree, seed, or root. The Son of God knows that the life of God is the only life. and is not fooled as the natural man is fooled into thinking that his life is the life of his body. The life of your body is not your life. The animation of the body is not your life. When the seed falls into the ground, it is the life of the tree that life forms through the seed into the root and is the life of the root. The life of you doesn't depend on this body. The life of you is continuous. It is not a future life. It is not a life that will come tomorrow. It is not a life that began 30 or 40 or 50 years ago. Through a very trying experience, one of my friends told me that she held on to one truth. And it helped. Before Abraham was, I am. Yes, she was knowing herself to be the life. And because she knew herself to be the life, the natural mind could not govern the form, but rather the mind of God, the consciousness of God governed. And that life which existed before Abraham, existing now and existing forever, always will exist. Your knowledge of this deprives the natural mind of its domination over the form and the forms that you see. One being, one life, one power, one perfect law, everywhere, until eternity, 
That is the consciousness of the Son of God until it need no longer be spoken. For you are that one being. After Easter, there will be a second tape, all by way of preparation. I hope you enjoy this spiritual audio. Like, share and subscribe for more.